Join the United West as we experience a terrorist attack inside Pamela Geller's free speech event in real time. This, uh, a very good friend of mine told me right before I left for this event that uh, you're just poking them in the eye. You're trying to provoke them. You know, why are you doing that? It's a, you're the one that's being offensive. And this, this was a friend, you know, and I was kind of taken aback. And I had to think, stop and think, well, what exactly is wrong with that? And what's wrong with that is that this is only offensive because Muslims have made it offensive. This is only something, as, as Kirk Wilders said, that needs armed guards because Muslims will kill you for, for drawing Muhammad. It would never be offensive otherwise. Consider this. The murderers of the Charlie Hebdo cartoonists had an accomplice, and as they were murdering the cartoonists, the accomplice went to a kosher supermarket in Paris and murdered four Jews. What had they done? They didn't draw Muhammad. How did they offend Muslims? They offended Muslims by being Jewish. Okay, so we have to not draw Muhammad, because that will poke him in the eye and offend them. And then we have to not be Jewish, because that will poke them in the eye and offend them. And then what? Okay, I guess pork and alcohol are right out. Okay, and then what? Take the humor, yes, yes, and the Islamic State. The Islamic State is beheading people and taking sex slaves and subjugating the Christians under the hegemony of the Islamic law, and they're doing it all on the basis of Quranic directives, and so that's all Islamic. So I guess we can't say a word about that, because that would, that would poke them in the eye and offend Muslims. And you see, step by step by step, we're ending up going in the direction of accepting Islamic law. And every Western media outlet that refused to publish the Muhammad cartoons was accepting Islamic blasphemy law. <laughs> and so I say it's time for a, a, a little cultural self-assertiveness. In the 19th century, they didn't have these problems. There's the famous story that I'll close with from the British Raj, the, uh, the British colonization of India. And in India, the Hindus, not the Muslims, but the Hindus, had the practice of sati, where the widow, the wife of a man who had just died, would be thrown upon his funeral pyre and be burnt to death. And the British outlawed it. And the uh, Hindu delegation came to General Sir Charles Napier, who was the governor general of the area, and they said to him, you can't outlaw this, this is our culture. And he said, oh, you, it's your culture. Oh, well then very well. You live out your culture. But we also have a culture, and our culture is that men who force women to throw themselves on fires will be hanged by the neck until dead. <laughs> so you live out your culture, and then we'll live out ours. Yeah. In the West, we should be saying exactly that. Yeah, okay, you're going to kill for people who draw Muhammad? Then we will protect people who draw Muhammad. And we will, we will hunt you down and kill you for trying to kill people for drawing Muhammad. Freedom of speech is not an end in itself. The freedom of speech was put into the Constitution as our fundamental protection against tyranny. If the governing authority or any power that rules in whatever way, and as Pamela noted, you know, the, the, you want to know who rules over you, then find out who you cannot criticize. The people who have the clout, the people who have the power, if they are able to silence by the rule of law, by the force of law, those whose opinions they don't like, then a free society is dead then they can do whatever they wish unopposed and dissent is impossible. And that's what this is all about. This is not about insulting Muslims or offending Muslims or poking them in the eye or even about drawing Muhammad, ultimately. It's just that that's where they are making the line and that's where we're going to stand. And we're going to stand against tyranny and for freedom. You're What's going on? We had to sit outside. Police officers have been shot, two suspects have been shot, possibly have explosives on them, okay? That's what we're worried about right now. We are going to move y'all into the auditorium here in just a minute. I just need everybody to remain calm, be kind of orderly, and we're going to take you into the auditorium a little further away from the front of this building, all right? All right, everybody up in the stands, please. Cameraman, everybody up there. there this is not a waiting area. Up, up there, please. Please get a seat, please. Please get a seat.
Yes, sir. Everybody, please try to get in this one section where we can kind of protect you and keep an eye on you, please. All right, it is, uh, <laughs> it's almost 8 o'clock, uh, almost 8 o'clock Central Time, May 3rd, uh, 2015. We're still in the Curtis Colwell Center, getting a little more of an update. The police officer has been uh, removed from the scene to a hospital, and we're getting, we're getting support, so we, we got to be careful. shot in the ankle, and it looks like the officer's going to be fine. Shot in the ankle, looks like he'll be fine. Uh, the, the two shooters uh, may be deceased is one of the ideas here, but a news reporter who was outside heard the initial shots, then heard a hail of gunfire. So it looks like the cops opened up on the two guys, and they may be uh, not faring as well. And there's also reports of somebody running around with a, a hand grenade in some of the local businesses, and the Walmart's been shut down, and some of the local businesses are being evacuated. We're, we're seeing that in news reports right now. So. Hi, Tom Trento, 8.40 Central Time. We're being transported, the, the whole group, out of the uh, Curtis Colwell Civic Center in Garland, Texas, to a more secure location while the uh, law enforcement agencies, variety of agencies, are searching for uh, more potential suspects. And um, we got the whole area, as you can see, show the police this corner. The whole area is uh, blocked off, helicopters in the air. A uh, very tense, active situation looking for uh, more potential shooters and possibly people with explosives. Stay tuned for more updates. What they're doing right now, okay? Our job is to actually protect you guys in this building, okay? So, I need you guys to do me a favor. I want you guys to please stay off all social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that mess, okay? Do not let anybody know where you guys are at right now, all right? If you need to call your family, you can call them and text them and let them know that you are okay. But please not tell them where you guys are at. I'm with Urban PD, and right now, the Garland Police Department, what they're going to do is they're going to come in and question you guys, okay? So right now, you're kind of witnesses. So they need to get information from you. Do you guys realize that you guys were involved in a terrorist event? Yes. yes. Okay, do you realize that there could be secondary yes. terrorist events? Yes. yes. Do you realize that there could be secondary devices and bombs yes. in the parking lot, in the building, in your car, near your car? Okay? So right now, there's... I don't want to try to argue with you over it, okay? So I got my boss coming in. You can talk to him about it, all right? Great, thank you. Any officer just inform us? The FBI's on their way. They're fingerprint uh, folks, which has nothing to do with the investigation, probably. Uh, but they may want to print everybody to exclude potential. Uh, they do that a lot of times. They'll take prints to exclude some prints they may have found on a car. Uh, so we'll see if they want to print us. It's going to be interesting. But look, these are very fluid, very organic situations. This is a terrorist attack. This is a legitimate terrorist. Well, I think it is. We're assuming that uh, the the perpetrators were uh, there for Islamic reasons. We don't. We have not heard that yet. If that assumption is correct, this is a legitimate, uh, very serious terrorist attack. FBI and what? In a very deeply indoctrinated Islamic part of the country. We're about five miles from where the Holy Land uh, Foundation uh, operated. And as we know, 2007, 8, 9, uh, there were trials, and those guys were busted, a bunch of them were in jail. The families didn't disappear. That infrastructure is still here. It's going to be interesting for the FBI to try to figure this one out. This is Elton Simpson and Adir Sufi, the two Islamic terrorists who were killed in front of the Curtis Colwell Center trying to enforce Islamic blasphemy laws. Here you will see their vehicle uh, where they were killed in front of the Curtis Colwell Center by the Garland Police Department.